Barbarians. Officers. Torturers. Lend us your steals. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else not sitting on a cushion. <laughs> Welcome today to the Brothers Gwyn. I am Ed. This is Bill, uh, and we will be talking today uh, about the last argument of kings, the last and final entry of the first law trilogy, the very first trilogy. Um, we will be doing a, a spoiler-free review of it today, uh, and we've been really looking forward to chatting about this. I have been desperate for Will to read this this trilogy forever. It feels like for a very long time. For a long, long time. And we've reached it. We've got to the summit, and he is there, and. Let's find out if he loved it as much as I did. Yeah, we will. And so we'll do the usual breakdown that we do in these reviews if you've been here on the channel before. And if not, hopefully you like the layout. And there will be slight spoilers for the first two entries of the series, but none for The Last Argument of Kings. So if you've not read the previous entries, I'd watch our review of The Blade itself and then give it a go because why not? It's an amazing book. Absolutely. So I think let's just get into it. We start by giving a talk of the blurb. So, Ed, do you want to read off the blurb? The end is coming. Logan Ninefingers might only have one more fight in him, but it's going to be a big one. Battle rages across the north. The King of the Northmen still stands firm, and there's only one man who can stop him. His oldest friend and his oldest enemy. It's time for the Bloody Nine to come home. With too many masters and too little time, Superior Glockter is fighting a different kind of war. A secret struggle in which no one is safe and no one can be trusted. And, as his days with a sword are far behind him, it's fortunate that he's deadly with his remaining weapons. Threats, blackmail and torture. Jezel Dan Luther has decided that winning glory is too painful an undertaking and turned his back on soldiering for a simple life with the woman he loves. But love can be painful too. And glory has a nasty habit of creeping up on a man when he least expects it. The King of the Union lies on his deathbed, the peasants revolt, and the nobles scramble to steal his crown. No one believes that the shadow of war is about to fall across the heart of the Union. Only the first of the Magi has a plan to save the world, as he always does, but this time there are risks. There is no risk more terrible than to break the first law. So there you go, that lays the tone for the last argument of Kings. Overall, the tensions building is getting more and more epic, grander in scale, and this is the culmination of events and the character arcs that we have, well, us two at least, have known and loved in the first two installments, which are the blade itself and before they're hanged. Yes, so let's go on straight into the characters then. Usually we like to break this mm -hmm. review down into short little sections. Um, we try and be short anyway, but we do have a tendency to, to waffle, don't we? We do. Um, but we will talk about the characters to start with. So Gerbil Crombie is, is known very well um, and widely known for his amazing character work, his fleshed out characters who are morally gray, ambiguous, and very complex characters that have um, streaks of humanity within them, uh, although humanity, not as hopefully we know them today, yeah. um, but they are very, very human. Um, they all have in incredible flaws that are fascinating to read about. They all have different philosophies about uh, every aspect of life. Um, lots of it is very pessimistic, isn't it? That's why um, I'm nihilist. Yes, uh, and Jabba Crombie has a vein of dark black gallows humour throughout um, in all of his characters mind there's always something quite funny to do with all of them um, now you have Logan the Northman who is the philosophical warrior turning his back on fighting but his past is catching up with him uh, there is Glockter the tortured torturer uh, who only has the his wits and the sharpness of his tongue left and then you have Jezel Dan Luther who is an officer who's completely useless uh, and again he's trying to turn his life around now because He's seen that uh, Gloria is not all that it's cracked up to be. Um, and you see this level of grimdark, this level of um, kind of satire throughout, exactly, isn't it? Definitely. Um, through, all, throughout The Last Argument of Kings, uh, which is my favourite installation of the First Law trilogy. Yeah, I'd say that, of course, the characters are deeply flawed, but you sympathise with them as well. You know enough about their background and what has forced them into the events that they are now in, and you feel for them and you are attached to them. And 
as I started this, I felt invested in all of them, and that did not change. Some of them, they commit despicable Oh, for such acts. bad people. You still love yeah, them. You still love them. And I'd say that, so this is what probably Joe Crombie is most well known for, and characters like Logan and Glockta are becoming iconic, but there's so many underrated perspectives and secondary characters as well. You have Colin West, who I think is, he's your solid person from the um, lower echelons of society who rises higher mm. but so that's kind of the trope but he but Joe McCrombie really adds a spin on that that makes it really interesting and I think Jezel is criminally underrated <laughs> yeah he's definitely pro he's probably my favorite perspective in this series really I would say so yeah him and oh that's hard West and Glockter probably not Logan I loved them all I loved them all well I loved them all but yeah yeah you're wrong I'm wrong, wrong. Very, <laughs> wrong. very wrong very wrong yeah Jezza was underrated and all of them are amazing um yeah absolutely so yeah. but then we okay I, we don't want to go into fear of repeating ourselves mm. in this uh, with the characters I say that the strong point as I said in the before the hanged review is the character inter interactions of the perspectives that we see and how Joe Crombie switches from one point of view to the other so you see how they're reacting to each other and it's absolute genius and in before the hanged there is that group dynamic of Logan, Jezel, Ferro, the perspectives and then a, a smattering of other side characters but in this that group is broken up so I did miss that but still, we are given an abundance of different interactions, such as Pharaoh may meet a torturer at some point, and that is a very interesting and hilarious scene. So even though that dynamic is missing, it was definitely made up in other ways and still was probably my favourite part of Last Argument of Kings. Very nice. Man. But then, don't want to repeat ourselves, um, which I fear that I'm doing already, so are you ready to go into the next part of this review, Ed? Let's do it. And the next part is plot. So, plot we, probably the strongest of the trilogy is exactly the last what I was going to say. Kings. Yeah. Um, it really ramps up tension. It has several climaxes, which just get bigger and bigger each time. Uh, it feels like halfway through the book, you have Helm's Deep, and then later on in the book, towards the end, you basically have the Pelennor Fields, uh, the Black Gates kind of thing. So you've got you've got the tension ramping up and up. The stakes are different, bigger, better. Uh, and there everyone's are, lives are at stake. Exactly, and the characters really do surprise you as you go through the book. Um, this is where Joe Abercrombie really takes his idea of uh, the tra traditional tropes surrounding the fantasy genre and he really subverts them uh, and gets to work with shocking the reader. Now, uh, I've seen lots of people say that when they read the end of Last Argument in Kings, they felt like crap. They really were not. Oh, impressed, I, were, were I was. They? Okay, sad is an understatement. Um, and I saw. I think I saw Mike from uh, Mike Brook reviews. He said he really wasn't impressed with the ending. But then he, you know, he let it sink in, and then a couple of weeks later, he was like, "That's just genius." Um, so that is exactly how I felt as well. So if you do read this and you finish it, you might feel like, "Oh, what? What's the point?" Everything's well, very bleak and black. Yeah. Um, but after a little while, after it settles down, Edith, come on, chill out. Sorry about that. Can't take her anywhere. Um, so uh, once you get to the end of it, let it settle in, and then I'm sure you'll you'll appreciate Joe Abercrombie's ending. Yeah, you covered most of it about plot there, Ed. I'd say, yeah, definitely plot is most important in Last Argument of Kings, far more so than the Blade itself, certainly. And we see the culmination of events that have been building up through the previous two instalments in this series. There's and a lot of threads, isn't there, that are pulled together, and they are quite epic. They, they really are, but really we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later when we talk about action as well. But yeah, it increases in that epic factor. This is fantasy, and in the first year, it's smaller scale. Well, the blade itself certainly is, and then mm. before the hanged opens up slightly, and then this opens up even more. And yeah. as we said, there's a whole range of further action and battle sequences that we'll talk about later in the review and also uh, Papa Grin said that uh, when he finished reading Last Argument with Kings he thought well I could have just turned on the news if I wanted something like that real <laughs> uh, but he loves it as well and it's definitely true that this is you don't get a classic happy ending in Last Argument with King but I don't think anyone well not for everyone not for everyone but I don't think anyone who's been, read the first two installments and knows what Joe Abercrombie's like expects one either hmm. I mean it, it, it would be nice to have a Disney ending but alas we didn't but there we go, that's enough about plot. Now we can talk about prose. I think this is going to be a much smaller section than our previous reviews because unlike most of the other facets of a book, the prose, I think, will change the least, certainly. And so I'd say, again, just a summary of what we said in the first two 
reviews again the prose is just masterful Joe Crombie installs a certain language and vernacular that changes with every perspective that really mirrors who they are but alongside this it also works to build that te tension and really create the mood and atmosphere that I think that he was striving for and he hits those peaks and troughs of the book perfectly because you can't just you can't uh, maintain that really high pace throughout and so when he does drop off he's working on the next part already and that next segment that next phase of the story and prose really is masterful <clears throat> we're hoping to soon start a series of reviews saying best authors for and then we'll do one for characters one for plot prose and Joe Abercrombie for prose is definitely be going to be in there yeah he's going to be in a lot of them but definitely for prose because the way that he just uses it and manipulates those elements of writing to his advantage it shows that he knows exactly what he's doing and the rules he's breaking he's doing them on purpose and he's obviously doing it very consciously and it uh, results in magnificent characterization and just really well worked pacing yeah by the time you get to the last argument of kings the the writing style uh, or the various styles that joe incorporates into his own writing are very accomplished now um, and he's really done the groundwork and it feels like he's really really enjoying uh, writing every single word and it feels that like every single word has weight you know uh, the way he describes things he he has a, a, an abundance of words that you wouldn't really use typically or see in books uh, to describe the way characters move the way they you know the way they they sound their actions uh, the way they are the way they describe certain things and some of it's animalistic uh, some of which is quite philosophical it all fits and depends on the character that he's writing at the time uh, and again that just shifts the way the, the reader feels about the certain characters, whether you know you've got Pharaoh, who's um, you know short paragraph. She is colour blind, so she doesn't describe anything in colour, and then she has a punchline uh, showing how angry she is usually. <laughs> um, so I would say you know that's one of my favourite things about reading uh, anything that Joe Abercrombie writes because I've always feel like it's it's a workshop, it's a masterclass in just how to write, how to form a sentence. Exactly. Well. There we go. Now on to the world building. Uh, I said in the Before the Hanged review and so did you Ed, that this it, Before the Hanged really opens up yes. the world and you explore the Gosca in the south, you go to the old empire and up north as well. And in The Last Argument of Kings, we return, uh, quite a few perspectives return to as we were the same as the blade itself, but in a very different political circumstance. And as you know in Before the Hanged, Bayer has been around for a long long time you right there that was close saving that yeah. uh, bears have been around for a long long time and before they are hanged you find a lot about the law of the world through him and that continues in the last argument of kings mm. and that really helps build up the tension and the picture and, and lead to the overarching story that really culminates in the last argument of kings yeah the world building is yeah. is seeping into the plot mm. isn't it and they're both working together to really ramp up the tension and ramp up the understanding of the reader about the world they're living in but also the reasons why characters are acting the way they are their motivations yeah so. in last argument of kings we're not really exploring new settings there is up north they go somewhere into the, the hills, high places the high places and that is awesome a very different setting within the north that is brilliant but compared to people before, from other continents now coming into play as well haven't you yes so. you do um uh, you've met a few characters from them in before they're hanged like Koska but this opens up slightly larger forces of, as we'll talk about in the action part obviously the stakes are higher the epic scale has jumped and so more forces are in play but also most of the world building in this is about the law and the history in the world that we've already discovered and because we're returning to Adua which is the capital city of the Union which is where we spend most of our time in the blade itself it's very interesting seeing how as a reader you view it differently because you know a lot of the history about it but also how the perspectives like Jezel who saw it as the best place in the entire world and now he's coming he's not jaded but he's He's been stripped of part of his naivety and yeah. he's realising what is actually important in life. And with hindsight into his past self, it's really interesting seeing how he views the city very differently. Mm -hmm. And I say that's what I found most interesting with the world building. Because everything really relates back to the characters, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. The way they see the world. But yeah. yeah, what's the next one, Will? So next now, part? action, combat. 
Ed, do you want to start this one off? Yes, I love Jabba Crombie's action because it feels like you're reading it through the actual character's eyes as if they have a GoPro on their head and hmm. uh, you're stuck in the action. Um, and I love the way that Jabba Crombie tells action from, let's say if Logan is having a punch up, then he might tell um, the fight, the story of the battle from someone else's point of view who's watching. So it makes it even more tense because then you, you see it from Logan's perspective. That's just an example. Um, but you might see it from Logan's perspective and you know exactly how he's feeling, what his thoughts are. Um, and then you go to someone else watching and you see how their thoughts are either similar or different. And I love that. It's the contrast of characters. And it, it was all relating back to the way they think, the way they work. Um, the action is brutal. It's very bloody and gritty and dark. And there is no romanticism whatsoever. Yeah. It, um, it's all stripped back Romanticism? Completely. After you read this. What's that? There's no such <laughs> thing. Um, but it is very up close and personal, gut punching, and um, you know, there's lots of blood and gore, and there's lots of. And I, what I love is how the characters feel everything. Everything has an impact on them. So um, you know, if they take a wound in battle, then it really does matter. Uh, and there are characters that definitely die uh, in this book. So be prepared, definitely. Um, but as always, Joe Abercrombie has a very fluid and. Uh, individualistic style to his writing when it comes to action as well uh, and the last argument of kings is no exception yeah i want to pick up i forgot to say that of characters but yeah the, you're saying that characters die they do die and there are some really oh, yeah. emotional moments mm -hmm. during the last argument of kings there are characters who you don't really realize how attached you are to them until they're dead and then you realize oh my god i love them and i think that <laughs> This year in 2021 is probably the book that has moved me the most with characters and I think that it's a huge achievement what Joe Abercrombie has, has done here that you're not just attached to the main perspectives but all the surrounding cast and he manages to bring them to life and make them sympathetic within just a few passages and pages because it is quite a wide cast mm. and he somehow manages to make them all just feel alive and whether you love them or hate them or anything in between they feel real, and I think that in my my case at least, Joe Crombie really hit the mark. But back to action and combat, I said that what is really interesting, we get a very different v variety of action in this. We have, as we said, the high places, there is a battle there, and it's more of a fortification with no way out, and it's using a lot of the natural landscape. And then we've got a city in a, si a city, a siege on a city up the north, but then also in the Union as well. And it's very interesting seeing how battles play out with the different cultures and mm -hmm. the different tactics used. Joe Crombie, as we said before, he's done a lot of research into strategy, tactics, the um, incompetence of generals, yeah. and uh, he's really utilises them here. The overconfidence, the underestimated armchair generals. Or, they really uh, are there. hiding 10 miles behind the line. Yeah. Um, taking a lot I'll of be wins. behind you every step yeah. of the way. Taking about 35 miles behind <laughs> you. <laughs> Black Adder. Black Adder, yeah. Um, but yeah, so taking a lot of inspiration from history there. And yeah, I think it is really interesting, the wide variety. And we also have a duel, which is one of the best duels of any duel that I've read in any book that has a duel in it. <laughs> it's amazing. We can't duel say it now. We, we can't talk about it because it is a spoiler, but we will soon be doing a chat with the Friends Talking Fantasy podcast and also with Mike Book Reviews and Dr. Philip Chase on two different discussions, talking about some of our favourite moments and thoughts on this trilogy and there there will be spoilers for part of that so we'll definitely be talking about this deal because it is awesome and i need to talk to people about it so there we go i think that's have you got anything to add for action or combat there ed oh i would just say very quickly that um going back to character and prose that the dialogue is my probably the best dialogue i've read <laughs> in a fantasy book and i'll leave it at that well, there we go. Short and sharp. So get the message go. across. So, so this go. has been a bit of a shorter review because we've said a lot of it before in The Blade mm. itself and before they're hanged. But still, they are our thoughts. And as a summary, I, I think Before They're Hanged is my favourite of the trilogy because of that group dynamic, which was hilarious and really emotionally moving throughout the entire book. But Last Moment of Kings is probably it's still my top three reads of 2021. I absolutely adored it. And it's I think Joe McCrombie... It was hard to bring a satisfactory end to what he built and he really hit home. 
he brought it's not an ending that made me happy <laughs> chance uh but it if was it does make you happy it, i'd be worried about yourself it was very okay. well executed yeah. and it, it really did manipulate my emotions joe crombie is a nasty man uh, but anyway i love last argument of kings it's my favorite of the first lord trilogy um because it takes what is amazing about the blade itself and before they're hanged and it amplifies it to 100 and uh, i just adore the characters uh, i do love the way it ends now i'm looking back on it um how realistic and gritty it is and uh, there's always a kind of brutal mirroring that Joe combi has whether it's in uh, uh, in his action or in the storytelling as well the arcs are very satisfying the characters are some of the best in fantasy the dialogue is amazing uh, and it's one of my favorite reads of all time so there we go then. So thank you so much for watching our review on The Last Argument of Kings. Hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please do hit the like button, subscribe if you want to, and we've got a link to our Patreon in the, in the description if you want to support the channel. But no obligation at all. We just love talking about these books, don't we? I mean, we're reading them anyway, so it's just awesome to be able to vocalise our thoughts and talk to other people about it as well. Yeah, so rather than sitting in your bedroom at midnight just talking to yourself, which I definitely don't do anyway no never no, done that no, anyway yeah, yeah so thank you for watching this review and have a great day stay safe the brothers Gwyn. stay safe from the brothers Gwyn.